was the earth created in seven days? No. <laughs> for those of you who believe it was, um, for you Christians, uh, let me tell you, then you do not understand the Jewish people. We Jews understand that it did not take place in seven days, and that's because we know what we're good at. And what we're really good at is bullshit. <laughs> there are people who believe that dinosaurs and men lived together, that they roamed the earth at the same time. There are museums that children go to in which they build dioramas to show them this. And what this is, purely and simply, is a clinical psychotic reaction. <laughs> they are crazy. They are stone cold fuck nuts. I can't be kind about this because these people are watching the Flintstones as if it were a documentary. Literally translated, dendrochronology means tree time study. It is the scientific discipline that concerns itself with the pattern of tree rings and how that pattern relates to climate. Using tree ring patterns can also be used to date dendrochronological samples and it is this aspect that will be discussed in this video. The idea is remarkably simple. Because the rate of a tree's growth depends on the weather, the annual cycle of winter and summer causes tree rings. Every tree ring corresponds to one year, allowing us to determine the age of a tree. This idea can be taken even further. Tree ring patterns depend on the rate of tree growth, which in turn depends on the climate. So trees alive at the same time in the same area will experience the same climate, giving rise to the same tree ring patterns. If we have two tree ring patterns that have significant overlap, we can conclude that the overlapping rings correspond to when both trees were experiencing the same climate. In other words, when the lifetime of both of those trees coincided. Starting from a modern day sample and working backwards through the tree ring patterns allows us to count backwards in time to date older samples. The oldest dendrochronological records go back over 10,000 years. The same winter-summer cycle that leads to tree rings also leads to ice layers. Ice core samples taken from shallow depths can be dated by visually counting the layers. At greater depths the layers become more difficult to distinguish visually due to a combination of compression and ice flows. But the layers can be determined by chemical analysis. There are two oxygen isotopes present in precipitation, oxygen 16 and oxygen 18. The heavier isotope, oxygen 18, condenses faster and thus is more likely to escape from the precipitation. The rate of condensation of the lighter isotope, oxygen 16, is very much dependent on the surrounding temperature. Thus, in the summer months, when the temperature is warmer, there is less oxygen 16 added to the ice layer. But in the winter months, when the temperature is colder, less oxygen-16 escapes. Thus layers with a lesser ratio of oxygen-16 correspond to summer, and those layers with a higher ratio of oxygen-16 correspond to winter months. This sequence of rising and falling isotope ratios allows scientists to count backwards in time, with some samples like the Vostak ice core going back hundreds of thousands of years. The same oxygen isotope ratios can also be used to date oceanic cores, with some samples dating back into the millions of years. One method that can be used to date these is called electron spin resonance, or ESR for short. There is background radiation all around us, coming from the sun, stars and the creation of the universe, as well as from more localised sources such as radioactive isotopes. This background radiation can cause electrons to be torn from their parent atoms. Certain types of crystals can trap these free electrons, and it is these free electrons that ESR attempts to measure. It does this by measuring for empty electron shells that have been vacated by those now freed electrons. The sample is exposed to a magnetic field and bombarded with electromagnetic radiation, usually gamma radiation. This gamma radiation can temporarily fill those vacant electron shells, and this shows up as an absorption line in the sample's spectrograph. 
The structure of some speleotherms and corals are particularly good at trapping free electrons. The basic idea is the older the sample, the longer it has been exposed to background radiation and thus the more free electrons the sample will contain. It should be noted that the background radiation isn't constant and any calculations using ESR will involve time varying radiation rates to determine a sample's age. Samples of both speleothems and corals have been dated into the millions of years. We have briefly looked at five completely independent sources and an associated technique for dating each one. You can be guaranteed that any young earth creationist in the audience will start trying to share their rationalizations for why all of those techniques are wrong. However, their task is much steeper than they realize. Earth's atmosphere is continually exposed to solar radiation. This radiation can strike carbon atoms leading to the creation of the isotope carbon-14. Because solar radiation is variable, the amount of carbon-14 being created in the atmosphere also varies. Because of this, the ratio of non-radioactive carbon to carbon-14 in the atmosphere continually changes. If you were to take two samples of the atmosphere at different times, they will contain different ratios of carbon-12 and carbon-14. We can apply this same idea to dead tree wood, ice cores, oceanic cores, speleothems and corals because they preserve a sample of the atmosphere during their formation. This allows scientists to cross-check all of the dating techniques used to see if they really work. The result? Concordance. The young earth creationist not only has to explain why all of those dating techniques are wrong, but he or she is also faced with the daunting task of explaining why they are all wrong by the same amount. The different sources used for dating are independent of each other, so how are they all affected in the same way? If all of those dates are incorrect, then how do those errors all match up when compared across samples? There is an old adage that a picture is worth a thousand words. If that adage is true, then what is the worth of this graph that shows such remarkable concordance? A gentleman came up to me, wanted to talk about it. Um, it was at this point in time I realized that, that really this is where we have our problem. This is a big problem in this country. He had his set of beliefs and I had mine. And it makes it tough because evolution is a major thread in the larger tapestry that I like to call... Reality!